Now for your convenience, I'm going to put timestamps and kind of a table of contents in the uh, description below. So be sure to check that out. Now, if you're interested in actually shooting and editing tutorials for infrared and creating like a DNG profile, I already have videos on that. And for those, you can find them in the playlist below called tutorials. And I'm going to put them also in the description for you. Before we can actually start talking about infrared photography, I have to talk to you about the electromagnetic spectrum and where infrared photography falls in all of this. Before we can talk about infrared photography, first we have to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, think of light as, or think of energy actually, as having different uh, frequencies. For example, you have gamma rays on one end and you have radio waves on the other. Now, the more dangerous waves are things like gamma rays. They are really, really high energy and actually their wavelength is as small as a neutron or actually even smaller for that matter. On the other end, you have things like radio waves. These are much longer. Now we're going to be working between these two extremes, uh, between gamma rays and radio waves. Now between gamma rays and radio waves, you also have things like X-rays or ultraviolet. There's visible light and infrared light, which is what we're interested in. There's also microwaves, but we don't really have to get into that. Today, we're only going to be focusing on visible light and infrared light. Now, visible light is 380 nanometers and infrared light is can go up to 900 nanometers. Now, there's one thing you should know. As the waves get longer, you start to lose color. So you have more colorful visible light, which is 380 nanometers. But once you get to 900 nanometers, then you're just doing pure black and white. So here, for example, we have a picture with a radar camera at 380 nanometers, which is complete visible light. Next, we have an infrared picture shot with 590 nanometers. As you can see, it's quite colorful. But next I have a picture with 680 nanometers. It's still a little colorful, but you can see it's starting to lose its color. Finally, we have a picture shot at infrared, 780 nanometers, the Hoi R72. By now it's getting really desaturated, but once you get to 900 nanometers, you're pretty much shooting complete black and white infrared. It's up to you to choose which camera you want and which conversion you're going to be using for your infrared photos. Now that we've gotten all the science out of the way and you understand how light works about visible light and infrared, let's talk about infrared photography. Now, when a camera sensor is first being made, it doesn't really know the difference between ultraviolet, X-ray, visible light or infrared light. So what the camera manufacturers do is that they actually put uh, kind of filters to block all the other lights. So your camera right now is actually uh, has filters to block things like UV light and infrared light and only let through visible light. The problem though, or actually not really a problem for us is that it is not 100% effective. So let's say maybe like 2% of infrared light gets through the filter that's designed to block the infrared light. So what we're going to do with a camera is uh, we're going to be putting a filter that blocks visible light. And because say 2% of infrared light still gets through, you're going to be basically doing a long exposure to capture the infrared light with your camera. All right, now that we've covered all the sciencey stuff, we can actually start talking about infrared photography. Now, believe it or not, you don't actually need an infrared camera to take pictures. You can actually buy a filter, for example, the Hoya R72 filter, that stands for 720 nanometers filter, and you can actually screw that on on any camera and you can take infrared photos. Now, this is the Hoya R72 filter, R for infrared, 72 for 720 nanometers. This means it's going to block any light under 720 nanometers and let anything above through. So what this does is it's going to block the visible light and it's going to let only infrared light through to the camera. 
if you remember, your camera sensor cannot block all the infrared light, but it tries to. So what you need to do is put this on your camera and use a tripod and do a long exposure to capture enough infrared light to get an infrared picture. You can do this with any camera. It doesn't matter as long as you can do long exposures. You know, People always ask me, which camera do I use with the Hoya R72 filter? The answer is, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I can even do it with my phone. I have phone infrared photography videos using this filter. And the reason I don't need a filter with a phone is because phone filters that block infrared light are not as strong as the ones in uh, DSLRs. So if you like, you can buy the Hoya R72 filter. You can buy it on Google. You can buy it on Amazon. Put it on your camera and you're going to be doing long exposures in the daytime but at least you'll be shooting infrared. So this is the cheapest method to shoot infrared photos using the camera you have now with the Hoya R72 filter, but you're going to be needing a tripod for long exposures. They're pretty easy to find. They cost around $70. So if you're just starting infrared photography, I would suggest uh, buying this because it's like the cheapest alternative. Plus you can use it on any camera. Now, People always ask me which camera I use for my infrared photos with the Hoya R72 filter. And the answer is you can use any camera. You can even use your phone. The way the Hoya R72 filter works is uh, it blocks all visible light and it only lets infrared light through. So anything under 720 nanometers does not get through and anything above 720 nanometers goes through. One more thing that I want to talk about regarding the Hoya R72 filter and shooting with a regular camera is that you can only shoot 720 nanometers with an unmodified camera. Um, I've had people tell me that they bought like a 590 nanometer filter and they tried to put it on the regular camera, but the pictures came out all red. That's because it's impossible to use those kind of filters on a uh, regular camera. If you see a filter for 590 nanometers, it's not for a regular camera, it's for a full spectrum camera. So those filters only work on full spectrum cameras. And I just want to repeat, it's impossible to use a 590 nanometer filter on a regular camera. If you're using a regular camera, the only infrared filters you can use are 720 and 900 nanometers. So just wanted to clarify that before we go on. Now, at some point, if you are interested in uh, pursuing infrared, you might want to uh, upgrade to an infrared camera. If you remember, I said there's uh, different options. There's the modified infrared camera or a full spectrum camera. So now I'm going to talk about getting a modified infrared camera because that's uh, what I had. This is my Canon M2. I got this on eBay and it's a 590 nanometer infrared camera. Now it's between visible light and infrared. So that's why the pictures are so colorful. When you get a modified infrared camera, it's at a fixed wavelength. So mine is 590. Uh, I can't really shoot other wavelengths if I wanted. Well, actually I haven't really tried. I think it's theoretically possible to use the Hoya R72 filter with this camera and get much darker images. But the point I want to say is if you get a modified infrared camera that shoots at 720 nanometers, you're not going to be able to shoot at 590 nanometers. So if you get one that's 590 nanometers, you might be able to shoot 720 if you have the Hoya R72 filter on it. But anyways, um, people always ask which infrared camera I use. And I just want to make it, I just want to point out that it doesn't really matter. Just because I use the Canon M2 does not mean you need to get the Canon M2 to shoot infrared photos. Uh, the reason I got the Canon M2 is because it was the cheapest one on eBay. And uh, uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about how to get these cameras. But I just wanted to point out that you can get any camera modified to shoot infrared photography. as long. And I recommend using one that shoots raw and that you can change the lens. But once again, just because I have the Canon M2 does not mean that you need to get the Canon M2. It's not the camera that takes the picture. 
In this case, it's actually the wavelength. So it's the 590 nanometer wavelength that you want if you want the more colorful infrared pictures, not necessarily because it's shot on a Canon M2. Now, the good things about shooting with the modified infrared camera is that you don't need a tripod. So you're basically going to be shooting the camera like a normal camera, but you're not going to be getting visible light colors. You're only going to be getting the infrared colors that you uh, got the camera with. So if you got a 590 camera, you're going to be shooting more colorful pictures. If you got a 720, it's going to be a little bit more or less saturated. If you got like a 680, uh, kind of a mix between both. And if you got like a 900 nanometer, it's going to be pretty much black and white. So uh, choose wisely uh, how you want your fixed, fo fixed wavelength on your infrared camera. I must also point out that these are not the cheapest cameras to get. I mean, it's quite expensive to get one modified and it's also expensive to buy a new camera that's already been modified. So uh, I'll talk about all that at the end of the video if you're interested. For now, let's talk about full spectrum cameras. Okay, so there is a third option. Not only can you use your regular camera with the R72 filter or a modified infrared camera with a fixed wavelength, you can also get a full spectrum camera to shoot infrared pictures. Now, originally this was an infrared camera modified to 590. And just this past summer, I actually had it modified to be a full spectrum camera. What this means is that I can shoot UV light pictures, I can shoot uh, visible light photos, and I can shoot infrared photos because the sensor lets in all of that. If I want to take an infrared photo, I'm going to be putting a filter on this for a fixed wavelength. So these are the filters I use for this uh, full spectrum camera. It blocks anything under the wavelength that I set it to. So I bought the 590 nanometer filters. That means it's going to block anything under 590 and only let anything above 590 through. If I want, I could actually put a visible light filter that allows only visible light and it blocks all infrared light through. So I can actually take normal pictures with this full spectrum camera. So yes, that is one of the bonuses of getting a full spectrum camera is that you can shoot, you can switch between taking normal pictures and taking infrared pictures. But the real, the downside of all this is that these filters are not cheap. Not only are you paying for a modified full spectrum camera conversion, but you're also having to buy various filters to um, kind of emulate the filters that the sensors usually come with. So if you want to take normal pictures, you have to buy a filter that blocks all infrared light. If you want to take infrared photos, you got to buy filters that block visible light and so on. So it's really up to you what you want to buy. So yeah, we talked about shooting with a regular camera, shooting with an infrared camera and shooting with a full spectrum camera. And really let's just recap the pros and cons of each. First of all, if you're shooting with a regular camera, you're limited to shooting with the Hoya R72 filter. You can't use other filters with it, maybe 900 nanometers, but you're going to be doing long exposures. That means you need to use a tripod and you're also going to be having to do quite a bit of post-production to get that infrared look. The good thing about it is that it's the cheapest option, especially if you're just getting into infrared photography. And I recommend most people start with the Hoya R72 filter and not just dive straight into infrared because then they might find out that it's not really their kind of thing and they just spend a lot of money on it. Next up is the infrared camera. Now, the great thing about it is that you don't need to use long shutter speeds. You can just take pictures however you'd like, basically, like a regular camera. Uh, so no tripod. There isn't really much of a downside except that you're just stuck with a focal length that you choose. And it's also kind of expensive, not only if you want to get the camera converted or if you buy it on the internet, it's not going to be cheap. Lastly, we have a full spectrum camera, which is pretty much almost the same as a infrared uh, camera. But the problem is, well, it's not really a problem, but you're going to be spending a lot more money on filters 
if you want to shoot visible light, if you want to shoot different wavelengths of infrared light. But if you're willing to spend that much money, by all means, go ahead. And you actually, you don't, one of the pros of full spectrum camera is that you don't need to post process as much. When you're post processing, when you shoot with a Hoya R72 filter, and when you shoot with a infrared camera, you actually have to do much more post processing. And with a full spectrum camera, it's pretty much straight into Lightroom and edit the way you took it. It also is great for shooting infrared video, like it's actually a full spectrum video. It's more harder to process infrared video. So I'll do a video about that in the future. Now, the question I get the most is, where can I buy these cameras? Well, actually, most people ask me, where can I buy your camera? And once again, I just want to point out, my camera is not important. What's important is the wavelength. So I actually got my camera on eBay. I know it's going to surprise a lot of people, but actually a lot of people buy infrared cameras only to find out they're not into infrared. So then they sell them for cheaper on eBay. So step one, go to eBay and search for infrared camera. It's quite simple. Now, my suggestion is to buy a camera that shoots raw and that you can change the lenses. Which one you want is really up to you. But actually there's a lot of point and shoot infrared converted cameras on eBay. You can get one for as cheap as $70 or I think I've seen them as low as $50. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, I'd go that way. But really it's up to you. The same thing goes for a full spectrum camera. You can find them on eBay just as easily as you can find an infrared photo camera. As for the filters, you're going to be having to search on Amazon or pretty much anywhere on the internet, but mostly Amazon carries the R72 filter and so does eBay. Remember, if you see a filter that's 590 nanometers, it doesn't work on a regular camera. That only works on a full spectrum camera, all right? If you're shooting with a regular camera, you're pretty much limited to the Hoya R72 filter. That's just the way it is. I think you can use the Hoya R72 filter on an infrared camera that shoots 590, but you cannot shoot uh, 590 if you have an infrared camera that's set at 720, unfortunately. Now, there's another option outside of buying these cameras already modified. Uh, there are services such as LivePixel or Colati Vision. There's actually many more. The only downside to these is that I think it's kind of expensive to get them modified and you also have to mail in your camera, wait a while, and then they'll mail it back. So in my opinion, you can just uh, buy them already modified on eBay. And as for me, I actually, I was in Hong Kong at the time, so I just got it modified to a full spectrum camera while I was in Hong Kong for cheaper. But yeah, I hope this video helped out some people interested in infrared photography and Please be sure to give me a like or leave a comment and share this video with anyone interested in infrared photography because it will really help me out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. In case you forgot, I do have tutorials on other infrared related stuff. So please check the playlist down below and I'll see you around.